All right, cool. Three, two, one, and we're live. Matt Hale, what's up, dude? How is it going, man? Good to talk <laughs> to you again. You too, bud. Oh, man, it's so good to have you on the podcast. Um, for the viewers or the listeners that don't already know, this is the uh, Conversations podcast with Nick Worley. Um, just talk about motivation, personal development, the things in, in my life and the people that I, I talk to, uh, some good friends about, about their life and what makes them motivated, their path of the development throughout the years. Um, so super glad to have you on and talk to you about some of that stuff. Super Jack, you know, I'm an open book. Nice, nice. So dude, I got to bring it up. You know, I was 17, 18 <laughs> years old, loading trucks in the middle of the hot summer with you at Indianapolis FedEx. I mean, just backbreaking work. Um, let's talk about that. You know, and how much so that sucked. And like, what was your perspective with that? <laughs> no, it's so crazy to think and like, look back at you know what do you know now versus what you wish you'd have known then yeah totally but i think that it was great though i think that that actually helped me a ton not only in my own life but also in just like motivation you know um i remember coming home one day after getting the paycheck and realizing that i'd made like zero money okay the worst, and yet we yes. were we were killing ourselves in those uh, tractor trailers, loading all those boxes up to 120 degrees, it felt like uh, day in and day out. And but when I came home and I uh, realized that my sister was doing a um, a uh, dog sitting job and made like two or three times the amount that I made yep. in that day, I was thinking to myself, you know, and it was during college, and I was thinking to myself, yep, this is really why I need to really work hard at you know grades passing, doing all that stuff, as well as just, you know, trying to create a, a framework for success. And so I think that, uh, that FedEx actually was a huge um, step in my personal development, for sure. Totally, man. I, I love the perspective of just your sister and how much she made doing something that you thought was easier, at least oh, from a, a body perspective. Exactly. I remember I, my arms got super strong that summer. But it, there were only three or four hour shifts every day, Monday through yeah. Friday. But I'm just like, why am I here? Like, <laughs> these, the, whoever I'm around, like I made some kind of small talk with people, but I realized this is really sad. It's like for some people that is their every day. Yeah. Um, but it also taught me a lot about like, okay, like I get to direct my life here. I get to have free will. And like for you hitting the books harder or for me, it was, okay, what, what's my path going to be? what do I want to do with my life? What can I strive towards? So I don't have to do this. Right. Um, yeah, that's, amazing. that's the yeah. thing is, and it's, everybody is different. If you love doing that, that's awesome. You made it, you know, whatever you love to do, if you can do that, whatever it may be, then you've hit the jackpot. Just for me, uh, that wasn't going to be my end goal. I, at that time, I didn't know what my end goal was, but I didn't want to, you know, bust my butt so hard each and every day and come away with not much to show for it right and so for me it was more of like a kick into gear of you dude you need to really work hard study try to learn something for the future in order to get going so i i can't say enough about that place because it was actually a blessing in disguise yeah it's kind of funny how that is with life in general like when you learn where you don't want to go that's almost more important than learning what you do want to do because you you have something to aim toward or aim against. Well, if, if that's not what I want to do, pun literally punching a clock, right? You get paid oh. when you hit the button and you stop getting paid when you hit the button. Like for me, it's like, what can I do to gain? Okay, maybe get a salary, like where a company trusts that I actually can come to work at a, <laughs> and I won't be late, right? And like, like just small things like that. Uh, but yeah, the world, I mean, it sounds like, I guess, patronizing or even a little arrogant, like the world needs people to load trucks. Those are essential yeah. workers. Like, you know, that's something that I, that I really value. It's yeah. just that same to you. Like, I just, I know there was so much creative thought in my mind that I wanted to put to use and, and, you know, like help the world. So um, yeah. that's kind of where I'm coming from. I, I want to talk to you about your job now and then yep. talk kind of what, what helped get you there. But yeah. Um, just like, let, let's talk about impact. So what do you do now? And you're just a, a machine, a fucking tornado of content creation. And I want to hear all about that. Yeah. So uh, the content creation, 
uh, comes from actually just listening to what uh, Gary V practices and preaches. You know, I mean, he he was kind of the guy that got me to think, why can't I just tell my perspective on what I believe or what I think or what I experience, you know? And for me, what I'm what I enjoy a lot is marketing. So fortunately, I've been able to get into a role where I'm the di- director of sales for a ES for ES99, which is a uh, which is a um, agency that's out of Chicago, Illinois, with about 115 different individuals uh, who specialize in a particular skill set of marketing. So uh, Impact as a whole, um, we are a managed service provider that essentially just helps businesses become more efficient through the use of technology. Yeah. And I'm on the marketing side. And so essentially what we do is we bring uh, enterprise and expert level resources down to that small to mid-sized market so they can still compete with the larger types of organizations. And so um, we have uh, we've had a lot of success. I really like what we're doing. I like the deliverables. I like seeing the clients succeed. Um, I I just love what we're doing for these SMBs. And, um, and I think that I've kind of found a little bit of a, um, uh, what, I don't even know what the terminology is, but I've, I've found a little bit of a niche into where I feel like I can succeed and, uh, marketing is phenomenal for me. And I, I can't say enough great things about impact because uh, they treat their employees like their family. I mean, it's bizarre. We have 750 employees and you know people, even if it's through teams and stuff like that. And uh, you get to build relationships. We go on trips. We do hit goals. We do all this fun stuff. And um, and it makes for a really good experience, work experience. And then, you know, it, it just always translates into the client experience. And we've been fortunate to create a team where uh, people are very focused in on our mission for impact and where we're headed and uh, and the clients uh, get to tag along for the ride as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's awesome. I can see that you're passionate and you can almost sense it in the social media posts on LinkedIn. It, it, you see people that throughout the day that are, you know, uh, just kind of slogging through their, their job or whether it's that or just their life kind of just not being there, apathetic, just not being present. Then you see people that are on fire and I can see that you're someone that's on fire. Like you're just, you're doing what you want to do. And that is to me, someone that's interested, so passionate about motivation and, and work, um, you know, like rewards, incentives, what makes Matt go? Like, that's so interesting to me. Right. You're, I mean, that's one of props to you, man, for, for getting to that level of being so, so on fire. Dude, it really comes down to happiness. And, you know, um, when I quit my first job, and I'm not first job, but second or third or fourth or whatever one it was, but the first, the one that you think of as like your first real job, you know, out of college, um, that took a lot of courage because I wanted to go play golf, taste it, you know, feel it, see if I could make it. And obviously couldn't, but, um, the whole point was the big lesson in that was to take a risk yep. and to not only bet on yourself, but know that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Because you can be sitting inside by yourself and really thinking like, why are you going to do this? You're getting paid X, you're doing well, you're, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, if you're not hundred percent happy or you don't feel like you gave it your all, I'm not going to be one of those guys that's laying on their deathbed thinking, what if, or why didn't I, or something like, I can't do that. That drives me yeah. crazy. You know I mean? Even during the day when it's something minor that doesn't even amount to anything, you're just like, man, I really wish I would have written that extra email or sent out yep. that other team's message or what. And that's not going to change the world, but it's like, you know, I think you really have to hone in on what makes you happy and try to play around in that atmosphere with whatever it is, yeah. uh, because you can work and get a paycheck, but if you're actually content every day and you're happy and you go in, you have a good ex- experience and you're able to help people and provide give back. I mean, that's why I do all the social content is just to give any part of knowledge that I can to that industry or those people that are watching it. Cause you never know when something is going to hit home or something is going to uh, be applicable to their business. And then if you can have some sort of an effect that way, knowingly or unknowingly, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love what you said about like, 
your customers are along for the ride. Like you're building, you're creating content. You are marketing yourself, but you're also an agent for your customers. It's all like the same person. It's all the same thing. And I, what comes to mind right now is like work-life balance. I'm not so much someone that wants to turn off. I just want to love what I'm doing so much that there you go. Yeah. it's like, I don't need to turn off. It's just me. And, and when I, when I come home, that same work person, like I'm not stressed out because I'm not stressed at work, you know? I'm in sales. So there's going to be a little bit of that, but it's, yeah. it's all the same life. Right. And that's, I think that's the key is if you're someone that has the ability, the privilege, the, whatever it is to find what you love to do and to make that a career, if you have the drive to, to make that your career, oh man, I just, I, I would get yeah, it no, up. Really you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, most people think, oh, well, we got to be flying out on private jets and boats and all this stuff. Right. And yeah, that's cool, you know, but that'll get old after a week or two, you know, maybe a month when you're just, you know, balling out, you know, whatever. But the thing is, though, if you can make money and you actually enjoy what you do, meaning make money in order to survive and do all these things and do whatever you want to do kind of thing. Yeah. Hit the lottery anyway, no matter if it's 50 grand a year, 100 or what, whatever it may be to you, you know? Yeah. And that's where I think that, um, that really trying to fall in love with what you do and then trying to make that work. And especially in a time like now where the, the price of entry is zero. Totally. Like right I mean, now, it's never been easier. Have equipment and things like that, right? And computers yeah. and all that. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you have a phone, you're in the game. Totally. Like, iPhone, so FaceTime, you know, it's, it's really not that, that difficult. I mean, I do think I have some thoughts on people that share stuff on LinkedIn that aren't necessarily creating value. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, but the, the political go, posts and all that are just, it's just a disaster. But uh, but here's the thing. You just have to look at it and say, hey, that's what they want to talk about right now. I, I'm not really for it. But hey, and I don't believe that that's the platform for it at all. But, you know, whatever, you know, they want to do, it's, it's their stuff, right? Um, but I just think that, if I'm going to be posting something um, that's not like, you know, on Instagram that may just be for friends and stuff like that, although I am posting a lot more business related content there, but um, you know, anything that I can post to, to provide value to someone else so that they can, you know, succeed or make a different type of decision that's hopefully in the good, right? Um, or, or be able to learn. I mean, I think that we need to really leverage social media to whatever extent that goes to as more of an education thing you know i think we need to tell life and tell even for future generations um about life through our perspective and what we just we may not know right now and we're learning right because you know nobody knows what the future holds and i think that it's um i think it's really fun to 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 really engage with a lot of different people and what their perspective is digitally yeah totally so we've been talking a lot about what gets you going, but like, I'm curious about what it is that if you ever need an extra boost, you know, what does your workday look like? Do you wake up this, this fired up every Monday, <laughs> every Tuesday, every Wednesday, yeah. or do you ever get down or tell yourself this, like, what is your schedule? What is your, you know, how do you organize your time? Talk about that for a second. So it's, uh, it's pretty crazy because I'm working in three different time zones, you know, yeah. so that's exciting, but Here's the thing, you know, I'll go to bed at, you know, 10, 11 o'clock at night, get up in the morning at around 4.30 to 4.45, get up, go to the gym. Uh, my girlfriend and I like to go to the gym in the morning, get it out of the way. Uh, plus, we, we both work pretty long hours. Sure. So back home by, you know, 6, 6.15 in the morning, Wow. Then, you know, get <laughs> dressed, ready, you know, uh, then we do, you know, our, our breakfast, you know, we do a devotional where you get our minds right, start thinking, you know, trying to, because for me, I'm more, you know, if I wake up and then I'm running to the shower and stuff, I'm just kind of feeling disorganized and too fast. I like to ease into things. And even though it seems like going to the gym at, you know, five in the morning is not easing into something, but truthfully it is because for me, it's, it's intentional. Uh, it, yeah. It, wake you you choose to wake up and have the time to even get there. I mean, yeah. Most people don't get up before six, let alone, I mean, the, to get up that early to go to the gym, you've done more in that morning than a lot of people have done, 
you know, in their mornings when noon hits. Getting and out I of think the that there was a um, there was a general or an admiral or whoever it was uh, somebody that was in the navy, I believe, that was, gave a commencement speech once, and he said, you know, the first thing you need to do is to make your bed because yeah. that will give you a sense of accomplishment, you know, and it's interesting when you put some little things like that into practice, how far it goes, because for me, getting up and going to the gym, yeah, you look better, you're eating better and feeling better, all that kind of stuff, but it does a lot for your mind too, starting the day off. Mm -hmm. And then when you're going into the Monday morning meeting and it's 745 and everybody's kind of like dragging, you're already rocking, you know, because you've been up in yeah. three hours. And, and then you get the day going, you're feeling good, you have more positivity, um, and it just brings a lot of that light to, um, to your coworkers and, and getting everybody pumped. That's kind of my thing. I'm, I, I like to think of myself as a cheerleader. Nice. Uh, and, and then, so we do that. Uh, the days are packed. I mean, I'm going on eight to 10 meetings a day, uh, whether they be internal, or external, uh, with, with clients here in, in Indianapolis, with some in Chicago, some in Wisconsin, and yeah. then some out in the uh, uh, Los Angeles area. And so, um, but yet the thing that's crazy is that it, it, because when you enjoy it, you know, and you like being able to be introduced to new industries, new businesses, things like that, niches and stuff, it's, it's, um, it's not tires. I mean, it, it isn't like a walk in the park. I mean, it's, 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 exhausting. Sure it's exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting, but it's not to where it's like, Oh my God, I have to do this tomorrow or whatever. It's like, Ooh, this will be interesting. Like I'm looking forward to seeing this. I'll do a little bit of information gathering and all that, you know? And then my day usually ends at like eight o'clock at night or so, because you know, you got to think three hours time difference over to California, and I'm still making sure that those teams over there are doing well, and um, you know, wow. the, their managers and stuff are up to date, and we're all on the same page. And then you have dinner, and then you go back and do it again. But and it seems long, and it seems ridiculous, and all that. But it would be if you didn't enjoy. It. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. One of the things that keeps coming up for me is this idea of just enjoying it and be staying, staying present, right? Like I'm taking the shower now intentionally. I'm having breakfast intentionally. I'm doing devotions. Like, what do I want to manifest in my day? I mean, it sounds cheesy or whatever. That stuff is real, man. You, it's if real. You, if you tell yourself in your mind what you want to be, what you want your day to look like, you know, imagining that 745 meeting, I'm going to be the most hyped up person in that room you will be. And it's, right. it's re remarkable what energy can do when, it, when you spread it and how other people pick up on it and how the whole room can shift when gravitate when, you're, when, yeah. you're, when you're on. Right. Yep. I have a, uh, a buddy, well, a best friend in the world, but do you know, or do you remember Hugh Weiskittle? Was he a cathedral kid or someone else? He was a cathedral and a star yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, sounds familiar. But anyway, um, he, uh, he and I are thick as thieves, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. And, um, uh, he, when I actually, and this didn't start as a, until probably almost a year ago where I really started getting serious about this stuff. Cause I was, I was really, uh, struggling with, um, alcohol. I was drinking like a fish mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot had, you know, just by being in college and then you take it after college yeah. and yada, yada, yada. And, then it's, this is just what you're supposed to do after work and all this. Yeah. Stuff. And then you get into quarantine and then, yeah. you know, then you're just, well, your night, your night starts at like two in the afternoon, you know, and it just became a, yeah. a major problem. And so I had to do something about it. And so when I was talking to him about that a lot, and my girlfriend, a couple of others, it was like, got to get into a routine. You know, your routine is dedicated to just getting out of control versus you know, waking up, getting your mind right, getting your day started, motivating, you know, being, you know, just a better person, you know? Yeah. And I tell you, you're, you hit the nail on the head when you're, you're talking about, you know, just you're doing something uh, diligently or uh, you're doing something for yourself and doing all these things. You, it's, it's a hundred percent right. And it breeds success. And I just know that when I was able to get all my ducks in a row, yeah. you know, I mean, you start seeing deals hit. You start seeing 
better meetings. He starts helping other people. He starts seeing the company rise. And maybe it's all, you know, just funny timing or coincidence. But for me, I don't look at it that way. And so I'm going to continue going down this yeah. road. No, I, I don't think it's a coincidence at all. Like when, when good things start happening in one area of your life, they're going to carry over. And I mean, thank you so much for being transparent and even vulnerable. Like that's kind of what I want this to be too. Like yep. people need to be able to share motivation is a lot of what what wasn't working before or like what what you get to say no to uh, yeah i've actually taken the last week uh totally sober and like i've noticed s- certain things that maybe wouldn't have happened if i you know if i was drinking that night and i i'm not someone that wants to you know pound six or seven beers in a row but i like the taste <laughs> of red wine i like the taste of of right. IPAs, right? Like yeah. basic white guy, love IPAs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. That's but, it. That's uh, it. Yeah. But I mean, it got to the point, okay, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then it's like, oh, well, Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm having two <laughs> drinks a night. And then it's like, damn, like this is a, at a certain point, this stuff that I'm, that I'm doing, I do feel a step slower the next morning. I yeah. do feel I, like I don't get as good of sleep as I need. Sleep is so important. So I'm not going to sit here and judge my past self or anyone else that chooses to to drink because you know it, there's a reason that people enjoy it so much. Um, but I let's let's just say that there's a very real difference between when I'm totally sober and when I choose to drink even just one or two drinks every night of the week, the whole week, right? It's just different. This is real. It's just yeah. real. And I think that you have to be real with yourself. You know, you really got to get in there and just really think are you doing this? Like, is this really what you, because deep down, we all know what we want to do, what is right. Like at the end of the day, we all know what's right. Yeah. You know, and not to say that going and doing all that's not right. I mean, anybody can do what they want. You got to live your life. But for me, it's just, um, it's, I just have had better success, you know, just kind of pulling back. So that's what I do. And, and, and it just helps me be clear, helps me get my day rocking. It helps just the overall success. And I just feel like, you know, if I wasn't, I'd be letting my team down. I'm with and, you, man. So no, it's, not, it's not even about just them. It's, it's you. Like, am I letting myself down right now? Is this really me? And it takes a few hours to get to that level, whether you're sitting on a beach or you're on a hike, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, what am I doing with my life? And is this the life I want to live? Where mm. does this take me versus this other action? If I do this, is that closer to the life I, I want to manifest, right? And that's a crazy point too in thought because it's like, when does that really even start? You know what I mean? Like, when does that start? Because when you're a kid or in high school and, you know, us and then college and all that stuff, it's like, you're invincible. You're doing all that. Some people learn at that age. Some people don't like me. It was just like a year ago. You know, it's like where it really hits you in the face and you're like, hold on a second what am I doing here? Like, am I really going to be doing it? Like, you know, like when that happens, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So let's kick it over to sports. I mean, you talked about, you know, you weren't so good at golf, whatever. I know you're being modest. I know you're a beast at at golf. You know, (laughs) (laughs) what is it about um, growing up with that sport or just being so competitive in golf that that maybe has carried over to your mindset now? You know, what did you take with you that maybe wasn't so healthy, you know, mm-hmm. around competition or, you know, stomping on your opponent, whatever those things are. I'd love to hear more about the uh, benefits and the, and the negatives. That's, that's an interesting question. I like it because um, it actually has had a lot of positives, but it has had a negative that I'm now just starting to like really, um, discover i guess yeah, yeah which is you know frustrated or more so you know level set no don't get upset don't do anything like just keep going you know yeah. And I completely agree with that in the competitive world. However, I've just now discovered, I think that I've done that almost my whole life um, on the personal level. You know, like if somebody makes me mad or 
you know, there's some sort of argument or confrontation, let's say, is not being able to, um, like, uh, talk about, it, yeah, you know, or, you know, uh, nip it in the bud or, you know, um, be able to address it. And that I think has probably caused more harm than good. And, um, and now I'm starting to almost how I feel that I'm relaying the message is more vulnerable, more like open and more like, because let's look at it. Got you know, society says guys aren't supposed to talk about those things. They're not okay. supposed to be emotional or, you know, yeah. think, you know, whatever. And it's like, I'm not sure that's really right. And so I ha- feel as if I'm being overly sometimes, but it's because I think that we need to uh, change some things in society and, and being able to be transparent and authentic. And I think that it would, it would lead to a better world, honestly, if, if people would just be real with their emotions, but not in the sense of, oh, you did this wrong to me, then I hate you and blah, blah, blah. No, just like being able to address, hey, here's how I took this. Is that really, is that really appropriate? Or is that how you were thinking? Or yeah. uh, maybe I misinterpreted and, and things like that that because i think you have to point your point the thumb it's a lot easier to point fingers than it is thumbs right and yeah. so when you point the thumb at you i feel like it's like hey hold on you matt are taking this as they want to screw you over versus what does it actually mean to them you know and so instead of having and that's tough for an irish guy you know because I mean, I take off like a rocket ship, yeah. but, but I think that that's really uh, something that I've learned a lot recently that I think had started or manifested from golf and how I was taught to play. That being said, I think the discipline, I think the um, creativity, mm-hmm. um, I think that the overall um, uh, strategy and stuff, I think has helped me a lot in business. Sure. Um, knowing not to get too high, too low, you know, kind of stay even keel, play the shot at hand, AKA live the day at hand. And wow. Yeah. That's so true. To, yeah. And, and just being able to uh, give what you can in that meeting and yeah, one meeting, maybe a half hour, an hour long or what have you, you may not get something out of it, but you don't know what that person yeah, you know, and so that's why I try to give my all or try to give my best type of advice or perspective in those moments so that something will help. Yeah. Talking about the kind of the being vulnerable, being transparent, I totally get that. You know, throughout growing up playing basketball, you know, you want to be the, the guy on the court who's an alpha, who's the tough guy, who isn't going to let anything get to them, right? Talking trash or whatever. And that, you know, in a way that, that's helpful on the court, but when you step away from that and you're with your girlfriend and you're not telling her what you need to say because you don't want to be seen as, I mean, there's a lot of stuff about we, yeah, or, men, being a man, being a guy, mm-hmm. being vulnerable. That's just not something that is helpful if you're withholding really important information. So 100%, and you're not you know, being honest. It's, and at the end of the day, dude, you, you sew so many yarns or whatever the <laughs> proper terminology is, but then you can't keep up with everything. And quite frankly, you seem like tight inside rather than just completely free and open and just nothing. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and I think that it led me back to like the drinking thing. I mean, I remember vividly sometimes, you know, almost hiding it in a way. Yeah. And, and it yeah. was like, why the hell am I doing this? Like, why do I need to? Everybody knows that I do. But when I found out and started to realize that I was hiding, then it was like, oh, that can't be good. You yeah, know what I mean? Can't be good. And so, and so I think with a, with you know whether it's business, whether it's your personal life, whatever, authenticity is going to win. And you yeah. just because it's too hard to keep up with the other garbage. And yeah. you know, you know the old adage or the old joke or meme or whatever it is that's like, you know, there's um, stop trying to be somebody else because you know that you are or trying to be somebody else. They already have one of those. You could just be yourself. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm struggling with it. And I've honestly, we, I caught you at a really interesting time because I've realized that I've, I've not been as transparent as I, as I think that I am. Like going back to knowing yourself, I really thought that the last couple of years I was being totally transparent. And, you know, it's now it's like, 
okay, this is where I wasn't doing what I thought I was. And it's, it's freaking hard to say the hard thing, the difficult thing to bring up, but it's also like, I got to trust that my girlfriend or my parents or my best friends, that they are holding a space for what's really happening inside me. And I think the most important thing is that previously I would go two steps further and say, if I let this be known, this person will reject me or this person will judge me or this person. And like, if you're saying that you had three beers, but you actually had five, you know, why does that happen? Like, of course your girlfriend loves you. And if you say, Hey, I had five beers, she's going to be either okay with that or she's she's going to hold that space and tell you, you know, Matt, maybe five is too much for a Monday. Right. And like, because you have withheld that information, you never get the chance to become a better person, you know? No. And you're actually doing the opposite because you're, you're, you're almost, I, I, I sense of at a road of like deceit and, and lying and almost like an actor, you become an actor oh, in, your, in your own life. In you your know? own life. You're in your own movie. It's like the Truman Show. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, uh, it, I don't think everything, radical acceptance, you know, radical transparency. In the middle of a business meeting, you don't need, be, need to be talking about, you know, your dog took a poop or whatever. <laughs> like, right. There's things you don't need to overshare. But you know when you're not being truthful, when you're not being vulnerable, when you're not saying what you want to or need to. There's an anxiety that comes over you. So I'm... You can tell I've been thinking about it. I'm really oh, yeah. on that, trying to become as as transparent as I need to be uh, at all times. Yeah, because it's if you don't, it will lead into a world of hurt. And I just, um, you know, having done that my whole life, it's like, dude, stop being an actor. Just like be you. It doesn't matter. Like that's the thing that I find so amazing is the people that like you the most like you because you're ridiculous. Yourself. You know, so ironic is you think that withholding information makes you stronger, but the (laughs) strongest version of you is the one that's vulnerable is the one that, like you said, that walk into that meeting, you're just, you can take it, whatever, and it goes off your shoulder. You can, you can give whatever, and you have unlimited amounts of giving because you're being so true versus the guy who's, Ooh, I got to, I got to step back and stay cool. Keep your cool. Like, that's and people can see that this person is insecure you know Correct. and that's what's scary too is you know uh insecurity is like you know i think everybody is to a certain extent about random things right but i think it's how we help them with their insecurity um that is the biggest thing meaning it's not like you go up to that guy or that girl who is you know, all done up, but not talking, not afraid to, afraid to say all this stuff, you know, it's not going to be like, Hey, would you just be yourself? It's more of like, Hey, so what are you into? What do you, what do you do? You know, um, what are you up to? Or, you know, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? Or can you believe that over that? You know, treating everybody as people, cause you don't know what You know the how's the weather and oh that's awesome i'm big into like actual real conversations because that's when you get to learn you know yeah. and i yeah. think that it helps other people as well especially with whatever struggles that they go through i mean i tell people all the time about drinking or you know uh other thing random things and um, just to provide that vulnerability because i feel like if I get there first, then they'll feel comfortable to almost be themselves. That's totally it, man. There's a lot of research about that, that when you become vulnerable, it gives the other person the platform to become vulnerable. And it, think about a sales meeting, that is all you're ever trying to get to, is to learn what this person's problem is like. Because you can't solve a problem until you know what the problem is and the details about that problem. Um, there's a human element to every meeting, right? And it, you, until you get to that human level, uh, people aren't going to want to share information with you. No, you have to build trust first and foremost. And let's say, look, you're not going to get a deal done within the first meeting. So why are you trying to sell on the first meeting? It's like, I, I love the, the LinkedIn, the Instagram, the Facebook uh, direct messages that are, 
hey, I've got this thing that, you know, I can sell you and you're going to do X, Y, and Z better or, you know, uh, invest into this and you're going to be like, look, pal, like that just doesn't happen. Okay. Like it's just not going to happen. And that's not how you use social media, right? To just get into somebody's mailbox to sell them. Um, but, you know, I think just really highlighting authenticity about who you are, what type of value you're trying to provide, how to help other people. I mean, it's been proven that these methods work. So why not do it? Yeah. Love it. Well, I do want to start wrapping up in two or three minutes yep. here. Um, man, this is, this is just great stuff. I could talk to you all night about this stuff. Um, Hey, I'd be happy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> For you know I, am. I can talk to a wall. <laughs> For the listeners and viewers, I want to keep it, you know, 35, 40 minutes yeah. and make it digestible. Um, but one of the things I've been doing on the podcast is every podcast I'll ask a kind of open-ended question. Yeah. And I they're really packed questions. Um for whatever reason this one comes to mind with you. It's you know, let's say you have a, a day in your life and you could do, do whatever you want in that day. What does the perfect day constitute for for Matt Hale? <laughs> so uh perfect day. It actually might be um, something that I might be able to actually do. And so, um, and it's, it's a weird one. So uh, through church, we actually have the opportunity to go on a, um, on a, not a mission trip, but a trip uh, where our pastor, who we absolutely love uh, at Itown, Dave Summerall, he um, is going to take a small group to Israel and go and see all the different, you know, landmarks and all Amazing. that. Yeah. I, that was like the one place on earth that I want to go. And we're supposed oh. to be going in November. Um, hopefully if all this, you know, stuff happens, but I think for me, it's just the experience of, you know, it's not the stereotypical get up, go to the gym, go play yeah. golf, do all that. You know, I mean, that's cool. But like, you know, perfect day to go and see something that, you know, I never would have in my wildest dreams thought that I could ever do uh, just of how I grew up and yeah. the trouble I got into. I never thought that I was going to get an opportunity like that. And, you know, when we heard about it, it was like, yes, we're in. Like it was, it was no option of like, well, can we afford it or can we do this? It was like, we'll figure it out. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and so I would say my perfect day may be coming, but it's I want to see the tomb. I want to, you know, get baptized in the Jordan River. I wow. want to, you know, see all the stuff. Right. I want to feel that, you know, so that I think is going to be my my uh, perfect day. Although I've had a, I, I'm so incredibly lucky. I've had a ton of amazing days in my life. I can never look back and complain. About it. Yeah. Yeah, you should start journaling and writing some of that, that stuff down. But oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean about just like the Fertile Crescent, Israel. You know, like that is the breadbasket of humanity, and yeah. being able to see where Christ was walking and like even you know, it's just so much history there. Mm -hmm. Even just going to Europe, you realize in Western Europe that these places have been around for longer than the United States has been a country. And then right. you're, you're talking magnitudes late, earlier than that with Israel. You, these are just ancient places. So what a, what a day that would be. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm totally jack about that. It's kind of hard to imagine, really. But, um, but no, I'm super lucky. And I, you know, I count my blessings. And, you know, I'm just super thrilled that I'm in a place like I am now. Nice. Well, dude, let's uh, certainly catch up again. We won't be recording the next one, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I'll be up in Chicago yeah, here in a, yeah. maybe a week or two anyway. So I'll definitely. Amazing. Up with you. Yeah. I love everything you're doing. Uh, just love the fire, the content, keep putting it out. If people don't want to hear it, tell them to unfollow you. You know, they don't. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Anyway, it's been great talking to you, man. I really appreciate all, you, all you've said and Converse with me on and um, have a great, great Monday morning tomorrow. 745 in that meeting, crushing it. <laughs> you got it. Always a pleasure. Take care, Nick. Look forward to talking again soon, buddy. All right. Have a good night, Matt. Bye. See you.